and welcome to Two Minutes to Target and the first video in a series I am calling The Anatomy of a Shot. And what we'll be doing in this series and in this video in particular is looking at everything that happens from the point that you pull the trigger through ignition, through powder burn, through the bullet movement down the barrel, all the way until the bullet exits the barrel. And the purpose of doing this is to give you the foundation of knowledge you need to empower you to make better ammunition and not just to give you the steps you need to do to make better ammo, but why those steps are important, the impacts that they have on shot dynamics, and how by doing them can help you be more consistent in making those mile, mile and a half shots one after another. Now, before you can understand how to get more consistent shot to shot, you have to understand what's going on during each shot. And so to do that, we're gonna show a depiction of a chamber, and we're gonna put a round in that chamber, and this is a depiction of a 300 PRC. It's one of my favorite rounds to shoot. And in that 300 PRC is a 220 Burger uh, long range hybrid target bullet. That's also one of my favorites and what I'm using in my current barrel. Now, the most important thing about all of this and the most important concept you need to understand is the equation I'm about to show you. And this has to do with burn rate. And in this equation, burn rate is shown as the variable R. That is the instantaneous burn rate at any given point in time during the process. So it's not gonna stay consistent, it's gonna be changing. And that burn rate is equal to the variable B times P raised to the A power. What are those? B is what's called the powder burn coefficient. This is roughly analogous when you see those powder burn rate charts that are all over the internet slow powders, fast powders, etc. This is roughly equivalent to that. Slower powders will be, uh, will be a low number, higher, uh, faster burning powders will be a higher number, and this will change as the powder burns, but at any given point in time, again, roughly analogous to what you see on those burn rate charts. P is pressure, and we mean by that pressure inside the case during the shot, again, at any given point in time. And then A is a coefficient. Now, what is A? Well, I'm not really sure. As a matter of fact, I had not seen this equation until I read Jeff Seward's book, Ammunition Demystified. Now, if you haven't seen this, this is a worthwhile read. I will say it is exceedingly technical, but I will say there are a lot of nuggets in there that are really important to understand what's happening. This burn rate equation was, again, one of the most important things that I've come across. I intuitively knew this, and this is a, that what happens with a lot of concepts in the book, is you intuitively know these things, but when then somebody tells you the science and the mathematics behind it, now it makes a lot more sense. And this was one of those aha moments and one of those nuggets in the book. So worth getting, worth reading, worth having as a reference on the shelf. So once again, this instantaneous burn rate, R, equals B times P raised to the A power. Now, what is A? Well, A was not in the book. It wasn't defined. So I actually reached out to Jeff Seward and said, hey, can you give me a little bit of insight as to what this is? And he said, this is derived from something called a closed bomb test. Now, I didn't know what this was, so I reached out to a friend of mine who, believe it or not, blows things up for a living and tests the results. And he steered me towards, uh, there's actually an industry that does this. It's, and there are pieces of a test equipment that are made specifically for testing propellants. And so anyways, not really important to the, the video, but I found it kind of interesting. I wanted to share. Anyway, he said this is roughly, that would be quote unquote 0.65-ish to roughly about 0.83, and it depends on the powder. It kind of doesn't matter in, in this video and what we're going to be going through. The main concept here is that burn rate and pressure have a direct reciprocal relationship. So let's start with an animation talking about what goes on during the process. And of course, the first thing that happens is the primer goes off and then the burn starts. And that starts pressure building. And that pressure first exhibits on the front end of the case where the case wall is thinnest and blows out, seals a chamber. But then of course, it's happening everywhere, right? And it's of course also happening at the case head on the back. As a part of this now, the bullet starts to move. And as it starts to move and gets you know a little bit down the barrel, that volume increases and the pressure now starts at some point to decrease. And that will change based on the powder and based on other conditions that you've got in the chamber and barrel. 
Now, what's happening here is as that powder burns, right, it increases pressure. As that pressure grows up, it increases the rate at which the powder burns, which increases the pressure, which increases the rate at which the powder burns. So this is what I mean by having a reciprocal relationship. And if there's anything that slows down that bullet moving, if there's anything that is increasing pressure in another way, it could be you're up against the lands or other things, you're going to get into what can be called a runaway condition where your pressure grows much more than you think it would just by doing something small, uh, either inside the case or inside the chamber. Again, bullet seating, those kind of things. So what are some of the things that can impact either burn rate or pressure and thus each other? Well, the first one should be pretty obvious because this is what starts the whole thing off and that's ignition. It could be the ignition of the primer. It could be the ignition of the powder. If you don't have consistent primers or consistent flash holes or your powder isn't le evenly distributed across the case, you're not going to get consistent ignition. And if you don't start the whole thing consistently, you're not going to finish consistently. The next thing has to do with conditions that are inside the case body. And as it relates to the powder burn rate side of the equation, this can be things like moisture, you know, either in the powder or in the case. Maybe you left the powder out on a humid day or you cleaned your cases and it didn't let them dry long enough. That moisture in there is going to slow down the burn rate and that's going to throw things off. Case conditions then carry over to the pressure side as well. If you're mixing brass, uh, you may have some that is thicker in the case wall than others and that's going to impact case volume and then that's going to impact pressure. Bullet weight will also impact pressure. Obviously, if you move up to a heavier bullet, it won't get moving as quickly. So expect your pressure to rise. If you go down to a lighter bullet, expect it to go down. Now, a lot of people may not think that seating depth will impact pressure, but if you've jammed a bullet right up against the lands, that bullet is not going to want to move as quickly as one that's say 50, 100, 150 thousandths off. So it's going to take a higher pressure to move it before it finally breaks through the lands and gets going down the barrel. Now, the last thing is what I call effective neck tension. And this basically sums up all the things that affect the forces that hold the bullet in place in the neck. So it could be that you're annealing, maybe you are using a tighter interference in the neck, sizing down the, the necks with a smaller bushing, or maybe the brass is inconsistent. So you're getting inconsistent sizing. It could be that you're using neck lube or bullet lube. All of these things will impact how well the bullet is held in place and a higher effective neck tension will cause a higher pressure and vice versa. So when you look at it, you've got a bunch of things that are conspiring to keep that bullet in the case. And then you've got other things, the ignition, the powder burn, the pressure build that are trying to push it out. The pressure always wins, but if you're not consistent on any of these other things, it can have an impact on your pressure profile and that will impact your shot to shot consistency. So the question you may have is why do different pressure profiles cause a difference in performance? Well, this is the graph that we had going during the animation that shows pressure over time. Now, this is just a depiction. It's not meant to be anything scientific. It's really meant to just describe what's happening. But if you increase things that are on the pressure side of the equation, like using a heavier bullet or jamming into the lands or maybe creating a higher neck tension, or on the other side of the equation, you do things to increase burn rate, like using a faster powder or a hotter primer, you might get a graph that looks like this, where the pressure peaks sooner, it peaks higher, and it peaks for a shorter amount of time. Then let's say that maybe you were to use a lighter bullet or back it off the lands somewhat. Maybe you use some lube or other things that would decrease effective neck tension. Maybe you slow down the powder. You might get a graph that looks like this. It's shorter, wider and has a lower peak pressure. And what's really interesting here is you might have something where you use the same bullet, you even get the same muzzle velocity, but you get different results at target. Because when the pressure peaks, how it peaks, and how those forces act against the bullet, those are changing from one profile to another. And it shouldn't be a surprise that when you change how forces act against an object, it's gonna change the behavior of that object. And that's no different for a bullet going down the barrel. This can have an impact on muzzle velocity standard deviations. This can have an impact on your group size at target. So to help depict this, we're going to be using something called Gordon's reloading tool. And this is very similar to quick load. Uh, the differences are that number one, it's free, which is nice. Number two, unfortunately, they are not updating uh, it anymore. They stopped in 2021, which is really a shame because I find this to be a little bit easier to use. Uh, I wish they'd commercialize it because I'd pay money uh, to get an updated version of this. Anyways, uh, very similar. And what, what you're doing is you're looking at different cartridges, different bullets, 
different powders, different conditions, and you generate those pressure profiles that I was showing earlier in the video. This time, they're a little bit more real life. So we're going to start, uh, again, 300 PRC. Um, I'm going to be using a 230 grain. I know I'm using a 220 in my current rifle. They don't have it in the database. I just wanted to use one that was in there. Uh, I did use the 230 in my last barrel, so we'll use that. Uh, Reloader 26 is consistent. I'm using, uh, I used that in, in both these last barrels. Uh, 74.5 grains was what I was using uh, in the previous uh, with a, again, a 230 grain burger hybrid target. So this is the pressure profile that that generates. And let's go ahead and put up that burn rate equation again. And remember, things that impact the pressure side or the burn rate side are going to impact this pressure profile. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to highlight this and we're going to keep it in there. And I'm going to play around now with things on the pressure side of the equation. So we're going to do that by, let's see what happens when you go from a 230 burger hybrid target to a 215 hybrid target. And you can see that a couple things have happened. One, that the obviously the pressure went down and you'd expect that. But two, the pressure peaks later, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and the pressure curve is wider. So it's flatter. The you can see that you know before the uh, on the 230, the peak was at about 0 0.68, 0 0.69 milliseconds. It's now at 0.71 ish. Uh, the PSI was at 62 ish thousand. It's now at 57 thousand. So you can see the changes that were there. So I'm going to go ahead and let's let's highlight this one, and I'm going to go ahead and put up now change uh, from a 215 down to a 205. We'll do the Elite Hunter 205. And once again, it flattened. The point of peak pressure moved to the right. The curve widened out. Okay, so why is this important? Well, Gordon's also has this pretty cool tool that allows you to look at pressure over where the bullet is at various lengths of the barrel. And so I'm going to bring this up. I'm not going to go through it in, in real time in the video. I'm just going to bring up the diagram so you can compare. And you can see that as we've changed that bullet weight, which means as we've changed the pressure side of that burn rate equation, where the bullet reaches peak pressure in the barrel has changed. And no barrel is perfect. They all have bends and burrs and turns and bullets aren't perfect. They're spinning and they have variances. And how these variances interact is a driver of dispersion. Now you might say, we're not gonna shoot a 205 at that kind of low pressure. We, we're gonna shoot it at a similar pressure to the 230. So let's layer in what that graph looks like. And you can see that even raising the pressures up, there is still a difference where the 205 hits peak pressure and where the 230 hits peak pressure. The purpose is not to compare one bullet to another. The purpose is to look at that burn rate equation and see what happens when you change things that impact the pressure side of that equation. So earlier in the video, I talked about the fact that you could take two different powders that get you the exact same velocity and you're getting different results at target. And, and why is that? Well, let's bring back up that baseline reloader 26 uh, chart, the graph, and it's 74.5 grains, 2787 feet per second. So this is the same one we've been using. And let's put in a couple different powders now to get the same or roughly the same velocity. And we're gonna start with Reloader 19. And Reloader 19 is a slightly faster powder. At about 72.3 grains, I can get 2780 feet per second. Uh, it's a little bit over pressure, but we're just gonna go with that uh, just for depiction. I don't ever recommend going over pressure, so don't do this, but this is to, to show what happens on this chart. And you can see where it follows that same pattern we're seeing, where it peaks sooner, it peaks a little bit higher, et cetera. Now we're gonna look at what happens when you put in something slower, and this is Rotumbo, 81 grains, getting again 2780-ish uh, feet per second. What's interesting here is that the peak pressure is reached at the same time as Reloader 26. The initial phase of Rotumbo burn is actually more in line with the Reloader 19, but then it tapers off at the top and flattens out significantly, so it's a much wider curve. You don't get to that move to the right that you get uh, with typically with some of the slower things we've been looking at earlier. And part of that, again, is this initial burn is that much quicker. So that sort of adjusts things a little bit to the left. But I'm going to look into this more and find out why this was. But this is a pretty interesting thing. However, when you go and you look at that pressure over where the bullet is in the length of the barrel, 
this is where it does revert to the behavior that we're used to seeing. Again, you see that reloader 19 high, very quick uh, peak pressure is reached at just over four seconds. Uh, then there's a the yellow, which is the reloader 26. And then the retumbo is actually down into the right. So this again falls back into the pattern we've been seeing. So once again, this shows you that just because you switch powders and get the powder to the same velocity, there is a different pressure profile that can get exhibited because of that. And that is going to change your results on target. You can't just assume that because you get the same velocity, it's going to work the same way powder to powder. Now, the title of this video is why the little things matter. And we've been looking at these big things, changing bullets, changing powders. Well, the reason we've been doing that is to show on a larger scale what happens so you can see the differences more effectively. But remember, little things make big things happen. So let's do a little change and see what the result is. We're going to change the temperature, the, I should say the initial temperature of the powder from 70 degrees to 110. Maybe you left the round in a hot chamber for a little bit too long before you fired it. Maybe you left the round sitting out in the sun a little bit, but it's 40 degrees. Now, the combustion temperature of powder during a shot is 3,000, 4,000 degrees. How is 30 or 40 degrees at the beginning going to make any difference at all? Well, let's take a look and see. So you can see here when we layer in this same Reloader 26, 74.5 grains, but at plus 40 degrees, look at that. We got a pressure raise. This actually took us into an overpressure situation. You can see that upward into the left movement. And when we look at what happens when we layer in that pressure over length, the same exact thing happens. Just a little change at the beginning, 30, 40 degrees, is going to have an oversized effect, and that can impact you at target. And what we're going to be doing over the next few videos is showing how other small things can have similar oversized results. And by controlling those, how you can get more rounds and tighter groups on target. Thanks for watching. And if you learned something today, please like the video, follow the channel, and we'll catch you next time on Two Minutes to Target. Middle. Top. Top. That's it.